Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I'm here to help you understand everything you've been learning in class. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you about the five types of chemical reactions. Now this is just going to be a basic overview of those five types of reactions. So if you're trying to predict the product, stay tuned, that video's coming next. Okay, get your notes, get your periodic table, and let's get started. We're gonna talk about the five types of reactions. So our first type of reaction is combination or synthesis. I see it both ways in textbooks, so I like to present it with both names. Combination, synthesis. And let's think about what those words mean. If you're going to combine something together or if you're synthesizing something, then you're making something. And that's exactly what this chemical reaction is about, making something. We're gonna take small little reactants and piece them together and make one product. So the general formula for this is A plus B yields AB, meaning that we took a small reactant and we added it to another small reactant, and it could be more than two. I'm just using two as my example. But basically, they're going to come together to make a compound. Visually, when we're looking at these, it will always be single element plus a single element. I say single element, but these places where I'm writing single element, we could have a small compound that we're combining together in a synthesis reaction. The always telltale sign is, is you're always going to have one compound as your product. A real example of this, we might have sodium reacting with chlorine gas. And then that yields sodium chloride. Single element, reacting with a single element to make one compound. That's combination. Let's look at decomposition. And again, let's think about what the word decomposition means. And that means to break something down. It's the exact opposite of combination. Combination, we're making something. Decomposition, we're breaking something down. So if we were gonna look at that general formula, it's going to be exactly opposite. We're gonna have a big compound, AB, and we're gonna break it down into smaller pieces. And again, these could be broken down into single elements, or they could be broken down in just smaller compounds. Visually, what we're gonna be looking for is one reactant that's a compound. So it's gonna break down into single elements. And again, that could just be smaller compounds. So if we were gonna look at a real example of that, we might have mercury oxide, that's actually mercury one oxide, breaking down into mercury and oxygen gas. Again, we had a compound as our reactant. That's what we're looking for visually. And then we're gonna show that it breaks down into two elements. So synthesis and decomposition, I like to talk about them at the same time because they're opposites of each other. Now let's look at combustion. Combustion is going to be completely different. The next type of reaction we want to talk about is combustion. Now combustion, we need to be thinking of fire, explosions, and what does every fire need? Normally my first answer I get when I ask that question is oxygen but we also need a fuel source. And the fuel source that's always going to be a part of the combustion reaction is going to be hydrocarbons. Now hydrocarbons are compounds that contain mostly carbons and hydrogens. There might be oxygens or nitrogen or some other element, but mostly carbons and hydrogen. Now I don't really like the look of the generic formula for combustion. So I always write it like this. We're gonna have a hydrocarbon as a reactant with oxygen because we've gotta have oxygen to make our fire go. And then we're gonna have carbon dioxide and water as our products. Now, the one good thing about combustion reactions is that they are always, always, always the same. The only thing that's going to change is the fuel source. You might have different hydrocarbons, but the oxygen, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen, that stays constant for every single time you see combustion. A real example could be if we had C2H6 as our hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, and that's going to yield carbon dioxide and water. 
One thing I like about combustion is you don't have to worry about diatomic molecules. You don't have to worry about writing compounds because it's always oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. Pretty straightforward. Now, let me call your attention really quickly. The one misconception that I find constant through class sometimes is this is a compound and this is a single element. And that makes us think of single replacement, except for this is a specialized compound. It's a hydrocarbon. So don't get confused. This takes a little bit of practice. When you have a hydrocarbon and oxygen, it's always going to be combustion, never going to be single replacement. Let's look at the next type of reaction, single replacement. Single replacement, one thing is going to be replaced. Let's look at that generic formula. We're going to have A plus B, C yields. Now let's stop for a second. This single element, it's going to kick out either B or C, and we need to figure out which one. If the single element is a metal, then it's going to kick out the metal. This compound here, this is an ionic compound. Ionic compounds are always composed of metals and non-metals. A is a metal. It's wanting to kick out B, the other metal, because metals will always replace metals and non-metals will always kick out other non-metals. So in this instance, since A is representing a metal, we're going to kick out B, the other metal, and then A is going to get with C. It's kind of like we're at a dance and B and C are dancing together. A wants to just budge right on in. A took the dance partner away from B and left B all alone. Now, if, if A was a non-metal, then A would be trying to kick out C because metal kicks out metal, non-metal kicks out non-metal. So if C gets kicked out, you would have B, A as your new compound. You got to keep it in the same order. Metals always come first. So if we're looking at this generic formula and we're trying to decide if something is a single replacement reaction, we're going to be looking for single element and a compound. Single element and a compound, that's going to be single replacement, not to be confused with combustion. Let's look at a real example of that. We could have potassium reacting with calcium chloride to yield calcium plus potassium chloride. That potassium just came right in and kicked out that calcium. Let's go on to double replacement. Now, I like to talk about these together because they're not really opposites of each other, maybe like cousins of each other. Single replacement, one thing is replaced. Double replacement, two things is replaced. And so our general formula would look like AB plus CD yields. And again, metals are going to replace metals. Non-metals are going to replace non-metals. So if, so if our metals are A and C, Basically, they are just going to switch places. And so A would be with D now. And let's notice, see how C is comes first? C is a number one. If we think about these as A as being a number one, B as being a number two, C being a number one, D being a number two, then you've got to keep that together. A number one has to get with a number two. That's how we got AD. When C and B come together, C has to come first because C is a one. Really, C is not a one. C is a metal. So you're going to have metal first, then non-metal. Two things switched places. Double replacement. I always kind of like to think about single and double replacement like a dance. If B and C are dancing together and then A cuts in because A was so lonely, but A is like, hey, I'm so cool. I can come and do that. And so... A just comes and busts right on in, takes over the dance partner, and leaves B all alone. Single replacement. Double replacement, there's like two couples dancing. A is dancing with B, C is dancing with D, and then for some reason, they just switch partners, and now A is dancing with D, and C is dancing with B. Double replacement. Let's look at a real example of double replacement. Before we look at a real example, let me keep in the same order as I've been talking about everything else. And that's what to look for visually. 
Visually, I think double replacement is pretty easy to identify because it's always going to be a compound reacting with another compound to get you a compound and another compound. Everything's compounds. A good example of that might would be calcium chloride reacting with strontium oxide. And so remember, calcium is a metal, but I'm going to call it a number one. Chlorine is a non-metal, but I'm going to call it a number two. Strontium is a metal, but again, I'm going to call it a one. Oxygen is a non-metal, but yet I'm going to call it a number two. A number one's got to be with a number two. A metal has to be with another non-metal. But when I combine these, I've got to think about charges. I'm going to leave that for another video. We're just identifying, so I'm just going to write these compounds down pretty quickly. So strontium, that's a one, is going to get with chlorine, which is a two. I'm going to go ahead and pause though for a second. This two, this two, not the same two. This two is a two because calcium is a plus two. This two is a two because strontium is a plus two. We did not just carry over that two. I know it looks like we did, but we did not. Again, my next video is going to be over predicting the product and that is going to be very important. And I will really reiterate it there. Okay, so strontium, I've already did strontium and chlorine. Now we've got to do calcium and oxygen where calcium's gotta go first because it's a one and then oxygen goes second because it's a two. It's a one and a two because calcium is a metal, oxygen is a non-metal. Let's practice identifying some of these. So here we have a single element and we have a compound or we could have A plus BC. This is single replacement. This sodium came in and kicked out a hydrogen and that left hydroxide available to be with sodium. Sodium just come in, split water apart, got with the OH and left hydrogen out to dry. Single replacement. Let's look at this next example. Now we do have a small compound here, but we have a single element here, but we have one product. One product that means we're making something. We're making something. We made this one product. And when you make something, that's combination or synthesis. Again, it just depends. Your teacher might say the word synthesis or combination or both. I try to say both because it really just depends what textbook you're using. The key here, though, was we were making one product. Combination, synthesis. Let's look at this next example. Okay, so we've got a compound reacting with a compound, producing a compound and a compound. If we want to look at this closer with the general formula, we have A plus B, a compound, and C and D. And then here, iron, there was iron here, but it got with chlorine to make iron chloride. So that was one switch. And then here, H got with S, H and S, that's two moves. So this has got to be double replacement. Now there's several ways to look at that and I tried to present all of them. You could say we've got all these compounds, that's double replacement. Or we look at this general equation, again, that's double replacement. Or we could talk about how two things moved, that's double replacement. You could look at that example and apply all of those rules or you could just use one. But I wanted to show you everything that you could be thinking about. Let's keep going. Okay, here we have a compound as our reactant and then it's breaking down into smaller pieces. Now I realize that is still a decent sized compound, but it is smaller. We kicked out that oxygen. The big thing here is we've got one reactant. One reactant always tells us decomposition. We are breaking that down into smaller pieces. Even though this is still a compound here, it's smaller than the original decomposition. I have some more examples for us to look at. Okay, so let's look at this one. Oftentimes people think that this is single replacement, but we've got to notice this is a hydrocarbon. This is actually the exact example I did for my combustion and I didn't realize I was doing that. But we have a hydrocarbon, oxygen, which is always yielding carbon dioxide in water. I've already gave this away, combustion. It's normally this hydrocarbon that gives it away. Next example. We've got a single element plus a compound, and on the other side we've got a single element and a compound. Or if we want to think about the general formula, we've got A 
plus BC and then B plus AC. One thing switched place. Iron came and kicked copper out. Now copper is single. Iron got with nitrate. One move, single replacement. Okay, let's look at these examples here. Ki, potassium iodide, that's a compound. And then chlorine, that's a single element. And then we've got potassium chloride, that's a compound. Iodine, even though it's diatomic like chlorine, that's still a single element. We've got a compound and a single element, compound, single element. Or we could think about it AB plus C, and then we have A getting with C, kicking B out. That was one move. Again, this is single replacement. Here's another example. The big thing we should notice is we've got one compound. We had a single element, single element, making a compound. That's right, I said making. We made something, so this is synthesis again. Again, or it could be combination. It's completely your call. I think I have a few more examples. Okay, so here we go, we've got a big compound, and then we have a smaller compound and an element, but the big thing is, is we only had one reactant. One reactant means we're gonna take that reactant and then we're gonna break it down into smaller pieces. Breaking down, that's decomposition. Decomposition. And then here's our last example. I'm hoping we're noticing that this is a hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon, that is a fuel source. The last example was methane. This is butane, that stuff. You know that stuff that you can find in those heavy duty lighters, that like blowtorch lighters? Butane, that is a fuel. Fuels need oxygen to burn in, and then they're gonna produce carbon dioxide and water. This is combustion. Okay, so those were the five types of reactions. They're pretty easy to identify, right? Okay, now if your teacher's like me, you also have to predict the product. So stay tuned for that video. Until next time, bye y'all.